Good evening, welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. The Abbott government's banking on Tony's tradies to fire up the economy. Last night, their second federal budget clearly targeted measures helping small businesses, and they hope to get a smoother post-budget ride than a year ago. Joe Hockey began today's annual post-budget speech at the press club in jovial form. Last night, the Treasurer revealed a clear big winner in the budget, small business. A range of measures were introduced to help them invest, grow and create new jobs. Our future growth will come from growing small business into big business. Or as the Prime Minister likes to call them, Tony's tradies. The budget promised an immediate tax deduction of assets under a $20,000 threshold to abolish FBT for work-related devices like mobiles and laptops, and from July 1, cutting the tax rate for businesses earning less than two million. It means innovation, it means jobs, it means more money to invest and grow your business. Parents will receive higher childcare rebates, but not until 2017. And there's a crackdown on welfare fraud. That will slash 1.5 billion from the welfare budget. Another billion will come from changes to paid parental leave. Multinational corporations who avoid paying tax could have to pay double what they owe, while GST will now apply to digital online services like Netflix. The government slashed the six month waiting period for people under 30 who want access to welfare. Instead, People under 25 will now only have to wait five weeks, a change costing around $2 billion. The opposition says it's all smoke and mirrors. When you look at some of the fine print of what they are proposing, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Joe Hockey says it's about Australians having a go. Toby Crockford, QUT News. Labor says the budget is all about the government positioning itself for an early election. And while the Prime Minister denies the budget was dull to sweeten voters, he wasted no time in delivering the sales pitch. It was always going to be an easier sell than last year. Mind you, it had to be. Speculation was rife that if this budget was poorly received, both the PM's and Treasurer's jobs could be on the line. Last year, the so-called budget deficit emergency was all the rage. Yet the 2015 budget delivered only a modest change in the deficit. Some say the government's had a change of heart about their crisis. Well, this budget didn't do that. You know, it moved money around, it didn't save money. And we will need to see in coming budgets greater emphasis on repairing um, our growth in uh, expenditures. You might not have blamed Joe Hockey for wanting to deliver some good news after last year. And it's the small business tax cuts taking the plaudits. This budget turbocharges two million uh, small businesses in Australia. The childcare sector's happy with the increased subsidy package, but not at the cost. And they take away with a billion dollar cut to pay parental leave, uh, kicking working mums uh, in, in the stomach. Funding for foreign aid is being slashed too, much to the disgust of charity groups. It can find the money to fund childcare and nannies for the rich, but only at the expense of the poor. It betrays us as a nasty, self-interested country. At the end of day one of the big sell, this year's budget has been met with approval and disapproval. But at least not the widespread outrage of last year. For the government, that's a good start. Sam Weston, QUT News. There's been mixed reaction to the budget in Queensland. Small businesses say it'll boost the economy, but there are warnings our health system could be worse off. Small businesses such as this one in Paddington were the big winners in last night's budget. Certainly that extra cash flowing through the economy, you know, if there's more photocopiers being sold, there's more photocopier repairmen that, that need presents and we'll be there to help with that. And former Prime Minister John Howard speaking in Brisbane this morning agrees. That this is certainly a remarkably good budget for small business. 
The state government begs to differ, saying it's a horror budget. Let me be the bearer of Tony Abbott's bad news in this budget. Queenslanders will wait longer for surgery. They will have to travel longer distances for treatment. I cannot rule out a reduction in jobs and services. He's adamant the state government won't break any of its promises. For the next three years, we've made a commitment uh, to delivering on our election commitments. So that's 400 new nurses, 4,000 nurse graduate places. Um, we will deliver on our promises for Queenslanders. The opposition leader says the government needs to reveal its economic plan. It is now up to the Labor government in Queensland, it is now up to the Palaszczuk-Gordon government to stop making excuses and start telling us what their plan is. The budget brings good news for the state's road network. RACQ welcomes $6.7 billion to rebuild the Bruce Highway. The organisation says the much-needed funds will help save lives on one of Australia's most dangerous highways. And farmers say the drought assistance package is an investment in the future of agriculture in the state. The announcements through the, the budget last night were certainly positive and a good first step towards what we'd like to see in terms of some uh, strategic longer term investments. Brittany Levinson, QUT News. Three members of one family who died during Brisbane's freak storm earlier this month have been farewelled at an emotional funeral service. The deadly storm cost the lives of five people on the city's roads. 74-year-old Anthony McDonald, his 39-year-old daughter Tamara, and his 5-year-old grandson Tyler were minutes from home when they found their way blocked off by floodwaters. They decided to try and drive through, but they never made it. Their car was swept away by a raging torrent. Today, their families and friends came together to say goodbye. My heart aches for all three of you, Tony, Tamara and Tyler, but I am glad that you have all gone together because none of you would have survived without the other. Poems were shared. One anecdote followed another. Mr Tony was besotted with him from the start. Tyler had his heartstrings wrapped around his tiny fingers and it was so sweet to see. I've never seen a granddad so close. They remembered their favourite moments together. Our whole family will miss them all. It's like a part of our family is gone. <laughs> they can't come to terms with poor baby lost them. This is where the car was swept away by the deluge. Three generations lost in one of Brisbane's worst storms. This terrible tragedy serves as a reminder of the risks of driving into floodwaters. Toys, CDs and flowers now line their final path. Gone, but never forgotten. Bernard Thompson, QUT News. A 17-year-old has broken both of his ankles after falling down an embankment at the Gold Coast. The teen fell six metres after attempting to climb a fence in a car park at Energy Circuit, Rabina. Quite fortunate the young man has been able to land on his feet and the fact he has youth on his side has meant that he's uh, sustained minimal damage considering how far he's fallen. Emergency services spent two hours lifting him to safety. He's currently recovering in hospital. Scientists have declared that conditions in the Pacific are indicating another El Nino event. The coming dry conditions could mean that farmers already struggling with drought could face further pressure. After a near miss last year, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology have indicated that an El Nino is on its way to Australia. The conditions often mean that a short wet season is followed by drier than usual conditions towards the end of the year. And basically during El Nino, that warm Pacific water moves across towards South America. And when it does it, you, can, you might as well say it shifts the clouds and the associated rainfall with it, so you end up with the drier conditions, so less rain in the uh, Australian region, for example. El Ninos have more often than not been associated with drought. Since 1900, we've had 26 El Ninos in Australia. Uh, well, 26 El Ninos, um, and around half of those have actually translated to drought in Queensland. It's uncertain how long the effect of El Nino will last. Dry conditions may continue, putting further pressure on farmers already in the grip of drought. AgForce reports around half of their registered farmers have had their profits halved in the last few years. A rough rule of thumb is that for each year of drought um, that producers experience, it takes two years for them to recover. So we're looking at a potentially an eight-year recovery period now for those affected farmers. The Bureau of Meteorology predicts this latest El Nino is likely to be a moderate to strong event. James Bullock, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Brisbane today enjoyed more glorious weather, a bit nicer than the unexpected cold snap experienced down south. 
These pictures are from Falls Creek in Victoria, where they took advantage of the conditions to fire up the snow machines. The Bureau says the cold snap isn't here to stay though, with temps in Melbourne back to 19 degrees by the weekend. Temperatures in the southeast today, Ipswich dipped to just 5 degrees overnight, while today Brisbane reached a top of 24. Looking around the nation tomorrow and showers for Sydney reaching 19 degrees. If you're travelling to Canberra, be sure to pack a coat with a light frost forecast, 15 the top there. Showers and 15 in Hobart. And in the west, sunny with a top of 27 for Perth. Looking around the state and a windy day forecast for Mount Isa tomorrow, 21 degrees. 22 in Mackay and Rocky and sunny in Longreach. The outlook for Brisbane over the next three days, mostly sunny tomorrow, a top of 21. Showers developing into the weekend tomorrow, a top of 23 on Friday and Saturday. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.